So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this little button right here, which will only appear when you're scrolling down the page or where actually your viewport is outside a specific viewport height. Then the button will appear, which is going to have a hover effect. And if we click that button, this is going to send our page back to the top of the page and also make our button disappear. And as you can see, the animation is a pretty smooth one and stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to show you how you can create this smooth animation using JavaScript. So in this project, we're going to learn how to create a go to top button using HTML, CSS and JavaScript, of course. So hope you're excited. If you are, give this video a thumbs up and let's just get started with the project. All right, so I have my code editor open, which is Visual Studio Code. As always, I have a folder, it's called code. And in this folder, I'm going to create a index dot html file start with the boilerplate automatically add to it the link with the style dot css that we still need to create by the way the entire code is down in the description below as always you can find the code on my blog on my website on my blog okay so we linked up our css file now in the body i'm going to link up our javascript file so script and the source will be a what is it called button so i call it button what did, I, what did i call it here a scroll scroll to top.js okay let's start creating these files now first things first we're going to go into our html and this is just a basic html as you can see we have up here in navigation a title some subtitles and subtext and down here we're going to have again a subtitle and a bit of text to it so let's get started by creating our nav tag up here i'm just going to type in a text of navigation then we're going to have after navigation our h1 which is going to be the title and within here we're going to have a scroll to top or scroll down actually this is going to be scroll down hit enter and then i'm going to create a main tag this main tag main is going to contain a section a, not a section a article and that article will contain two wait a second will contain a h2 with the text of subtitle then a paragraph tag this is just going to contain a lorem i'm going to add the entire lorem ipsa later on but i'm going to pack this entire thing into a parenthesis and multiply it by mm, let's say five boom there we go now i'm going to select all of our lorems select them go back person m and then hit enter it is going to give me lorem ipsum all over the place also right click and open it up with live server so there we go we have a ugly <laughs> web page no worries we're going to add some css to it just in a couple of seconds so we are done with this part down right before complete down right before our script tag i'm going to create a button this button is going to have an id let's call it go to dash top dash button and let's also add the class to it class of uh what am i doing this will be a class name so dot for class and btn dot btn height hidden hidden let's call it hidden okay let's hit enter the button is going to just tell us to go to top as a text and there we go we have our button Okay, now let's style this puppy. Let's go ahead and create a style.css file. And within him, again, I'm going to, as always, a general reset margin by setting our margins to zero. And of course, the padding to zero. Now, this should always take effect because we have everything linked up. Now the font family, we're going to, set to send serif and that's it. If you, it actually doesn't really matter. Now, just let me add a bit of styling for the navigation. So nav and I'm going to just give it a simple background of blue, but I'm going to do it with a hexadecimal color. So two a four uh, f d two. Then the color of the text will be hash ff. I'm going to add a padding to it of one, one ram all around padding. I said ram, not ram, and a margin from actually to the bottom of two ram, and that's it. Now let's tackle on our h1, which is going to increase its font size by giving it a font of four ram. Then I'm going to add a mar margin to the bottom of it of two rem and a text align of center this is the title it needs to be in the center of the page. And then we can move on to the H2 and I'm also going to target the P, the P tag, the paragraph tag. And let's just give it a all around margin of one. And that's basically it. Now, the last thing that I want to do is target the last article, which is this right here, this very last article. I'm going to do this by grabbing onto all of my articles and select the last child from them. Oops. And the very last child will have a margin from the top of 100 viewport heights. Okay. 
So basically, it's just simulating that I would have a lot of text in here, a lot of content, and I need to scroll down. Now, when I'm scrolling down, I want this button to appear on the right side. First of all, I'm going to style the button and then I'm going to also hide the button. So let's grab onto the class of BTN. I can actually do it also with ID. Doesn't matter. Let's do it with ID. Why not? So go dash to dash top dash button. And let me scroll up a bit. Okay. So the button, did I grab onto the right thing? Go to top button. Why did I name it this long? long naming convention, but it's pretty much the only button that is going to have this, uh, that is going to have this title in, is going to have this ID in one website. So you need to be really specific. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to set the position of it to fixed. Okay, let's also take a look at the button. Uh, it's fixed, it's, it's gone. Where did I fix it? Well, I need to fix it somewhere. So I'm going to go to bottom of 20 pixels and right, because I want to do it, uh, want to put it to the right side, also 20 pixels. And there we go, there should be our button. Now it's fixed, so it's always appearing. Doesn't matter how high or low I scroll in the web page, the button will always be there. Okay, let's also add a bit of style to it. So we're going to do a, I'm going to add the same background color and text that I had up here. Boom, just paste this in here. And then also let's decrease its opacity. Initially, if we take a look in our finished project, initially the button has a opacity only when I'm hovering over the button then uh, the opacity will be reset and the button will appear fully. So in order to do this, I'm going to set the opacity in its initial position to, oops, let's go back here. As you can see, to 0.5, okay, making my button really, really opaque, really, really transparent. Now let's also take out those borders, say borders none. Then I'm going to set the border radius to five pixels. A cursor, wait, I also want to have some padding. So padding, top and bottom, 10 pixels and left and right. Whoops, 20 pixels, there we go. And now the last thing that I want to do is add a cursor pointer to the button, signifying when we are over that button that it is there. And you know what, let's also add a, a box shadow. Box shadow, actually I didn't even add this in my initial project. Why did I add this? Why did I not add this? Okay, five pixels, two pixels and four pixels and RGBA of zero, 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 and a opacity of 0 0.5. Let's see how this looks. Pretty decent. Let's uh, let's still decrease it to 0 0.3 the opacity. Okay, there we go. I like it much better this way. So one more thing, when the button, when we're hovering over our button, and I said I want the opacity, oops. So we're hovering over the button. I want the opacity to change to one signifying that we're over that button. And there we go. You can also add a transition to this, so transition, uh, all 0.2 seconds and linear. Okay, so whoops, this should happen in much. Okay, so we have a little bit of a transition effect. So our button also has the class of hidden. And when this class is active, then it's going to be displayed as none. Boom, there we go. I didn't type anything in there. <laughs> okay, so now the button is gone. Now let's move to JavaScript because this is where the magic happens. Let's create a JavaScript file, what did we call our JavaScript file? Scroll to the top, I'm just going to copy it. Actually, I could copy all of this, so the extension. So new file, scroll to top.js, and let's do a console log of whatever, inspect this, and we should see our console log. Let's hit save again. There we go, there's our console log, perfect. So our file is linked up, it should work. Now we can move on and select the only element that we actually need to select here. Let's create a variable, const, and I'm going to call this variable go to top btn. Obviously, this is going to grab onto the button. So you can use query selector. You can use get element by ID. In my case, I'm going to use get element by ID because I do have the ID in there. So I'm going to use go to top button, select this little fella, uh, move my console log down here, paste the variable in the console log. And now I should see that I inspect again, go to the console that I did select the right element. There we go. Next up, I'm going to add a event listener to the window element. So you can select your window element and add event listeners to it. You go also do add event listener off, but I would much rather prefer to do a on scroll event listener. Now I need to assign this now to a callback function, anonymous error function, and this whoops function will then call upon another function. This function will scroll or watch for, this element will watch for where the, the, where the window is situated. So let's do here is scroll. We're going to call this function scroll function and initiate the function in here. Now we also need to create this function. I'm going to go down here, keyword function, keyword function, 
paste in the name and let's create here a if statement. So if the document dot body dot scroll to top is larger than 300 pixels. So the distance from the top is larger than 300 pixels. You just need to tap in 300 or the document dot uh, document element scroll top is also larger than 300 pixels. Then we're going to grab our button and change its style. So grab it to the style property. And from here, we're going to grab onto the display. And you know, it is actually in our case set to display none. So we can change this to block. What am I doing? As you can see here, block. Okay, so let's try this out. This means if I scroll down, so basically if there's more distance than 300 pixels from the top, then the button should appear. Let's try this out. Let's scroll down and there we go. There's a button. Now, if we scroll up, the button should disappear. So else the button, I'm just going to copy this, go to top button that is selected there, the style display should be none again. Okay, so let's try this out. If I scroll down, the button appears. Also hover over it. If I scroll up, the button disappears. Again, watching for this distance. Okay, but as you, as you saw in our finished project, not only that we can make our button appear and disappear when we're scrolling, we can also click on that button force the page to go up and make the button disappear. So the next thing that we're going to do is add to the button event listener of on clicks. So again, you can add event listener, but in my case, I'm just going to do a on click. You're going to assign this to a callback function. And when we click in this button, then we want the, well, it's pretty simple. Then we want the button. We're going to select the button again, dot style, dot style, dot display. And of course, we're going to display it as none. Okay, so not only when I'm clicking on this button, will this be displayed as none. So not only when I'm scrolling up will be displayed, will this be displayed as none, but also when I'm clicking on it. And also, now this will not only render my button to disappear, but this will also scroll the page up to the top. So let's try this out in our finished project, click on it, and the button should disappear. But we're missing here the scroll to top effect. So what we can do, still remaining within our callback function, we will now add again to the window, the on the scroll event. Now this event actually takes in two properties. One will be where should the window be scrolled to on the click event. Remember, we're clicking on the button, we're calling on this on click event listener, it's listening for the event, when the event happens, it's going to hide a button, but that's not all it does, it's going to select the window element, and the scroll property from the window element, and now it will send us to the top with zero. Okay, so let's try this out. If I click on it, it should send me to the top. But if you take a look in our finished project, not only that it's sending us to the top and making our button disappear, but it has this smooth, smooth scroll animation. So in order to achieve the small scroll animation, this window scroll also takes in another property, and that is the behavior. And we can set the behavior to smooth just by typing in the scroll the string of smooth. So let's try this out again. Click on the button and you can see how easily it scrolls to the top of smoothly. So let's try this out again. Scroll down, the button should appear. Click on it, it should scroll up. Also scroll down and just scroll up and the button should disappear. So hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you have any kind of questions or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. I always respond to all of the comments. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, then this is a great time doing so. As you can see, we're releasing new videos, extremely, ex extremely exciting projects on a regular basis. So subscribe to the channel and also click that notification bell in order to get notified whenever I do release a new video. With this being said, wish everyone a lovely day, lovely evening, lovely weekend, lovely week, whenever you're watching this video. And if you want to support this channel, not only that you can subscribe and like my videos, but you can also check out my website and my blog and check out the courses that I have there on web development, that is. So, with this being said, catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.